All right, Shalom. I want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in sincerity. And a hearty Shalom to the believers out there who's believing on the word, say, How about Shah Shai in truth and sincerity? All right. Breaking news. Uh, this article came out June the 1st, 2020, year of prophecy, around 4 39 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. <clears throat> and it's going into Trump considering a move to invoke Insurrection Act. All right. So I went and looked up Insurrection Act. And this is what it says. Insurrection Act. The Insurrection Act of 1807 is a United States federal law that governs the ability of the President of the United States to deploy military troops within the United States to suppress civil disorder, insurrection, and rebellion. See that? So Lord willing, I'll leave this link in the comment board and you can uh, go take a look at it for yourself but let me more says the general purpose of the insurrection act is to limit presidential power relying on state and local governments for initial response in the event of insurrection right says the posse clamatus act prohibits the use of the United States Army and Air Force, which has also been extended by executive direction to the Navy for routine law enforcement. Actions taken under the Insurrection Act as an act of Congress are exempt from the posse co uh, committa cuss Act. The Insurrection Act is brief. It allows the president, at the request of a state government, to federalize the National Guard and to use the remainder of the armed forces to suppress an insurrection against that state's government. It further allows the president to do the same in a state without the explicit consent of the state's government if it becomes impractical to enforce federal laws through ordinary proceedings or if the states are unable to safeguard its inhabitants civil rights insurrection act has been invoked infrequently throughout american history such as the following protests in the aftermath of Hurricane Hugo in 1989 and during the 1992 Los Angeles riots. Most recently, on June 1st, 2020, after a nationwide protesting of yet another, yet another unarmed black man, so-called black, in police custody, was murdered on the street in broad daylight and on camera. So this is letting us know, man, that this act, right, has been initiated. The Insurrection Act has now been mandated by President Trump, man. Now this article was done, uh, updated around uh, 439 Central Standard Time. Lord willing, I put this article also in the comment uh, in the uh, description box it says military forces would come from Fort Bragg in North Carolina and possibly Fort Belvoir in Virginia and could arrive in Washington within hours these people said right now check this out Let's start a little. You 
I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. But in recent days, our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters, Antifa, and others. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savagely beaten, like the young man in Dallas, Texas, who was left dying on the street, or the woman in upstate New York, viciously attacked by dangerous thugs. Small business owners have seen their dreams utterly destroyed. New York's finest have been hit in the face with bricks. Brave nurses who have battled the virus are afraid to leave their homes. A police precinct has been overrun here in the nation's capital. The Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial have been vandalized. One of our most historic churches was set ablaze. A federal officer in California, an African-American enforcement hero, was shot and killed. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror, the destruction of innocent life and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. America needs creation, not destruction. Cooperation, not contempt. Security, not anarchy. Healing, not hatred. Justice, not chaos. This is our mission and we will succeed 100%. We will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. We are putting everybody on warning. Our seven o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I want the organizers of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa and others who are leading instigators of this violence. One law and order, and that is what it is. One law, we have one beautiful law. And once that is restored and fully restored, we will help you, we will help your business, and we will help your family. America is founded upon the rule of law. It is the foundation of our prosperity, our freedom, and our very way of life. 
But where there is no law, there is no opportunity. Where there is no justice, there is no liberty. Where there is no safety, there is no future. We must never give in to anger or hatred. If malice or violence reigns, then none of us is free. I take these actions today with firm resolve and with a true and passionate love for our country. <clears throat> By far, our greatest days lie ahead. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. There you have it. All right. It's been enacted, the insurrection act, man. All right. Hey, man, it's Bible prophecy. So call all your how about shall shall. We know when these things come to pass, man, our salvation is near. All right. This is Second Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, yeah, the unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Yeah, guess what? These people are not being unbelieving now. All right, as we draw nearer to the end, the picture is becoming clearer and clearer, and there's becoming no doubt. All right, it says, For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness yeah the ones who lost who lost faith right who uh fell out this truth man who who uh said that the lord wasn't coming back soon enough right went back into the world for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness behold saith the lord yahweh by shall shy i will send plagues upon the world See, these things are going on in the world. Why? The sword. Famine. Yeah, famine is still here, man. That ain't stopped. Death and destruction, right? For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hope for works are fulfilled. Thus saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cry unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Yeah, we out there sighing and crying on the highways, man. All right? You got groaning in the spirit of the wickedness is done, vexed with the filthy conversation of this place, man. We're... we're complaining continually to our father to come save us right and therefore saith the lord i will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them behold my people is led as a flock to the slaughter right i will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of egypt yeah the land of our captivity which we are in to this day but i will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. And this is, guess what? The beginning of sorrows, man. How about Shah Shah? It's going to smite Egypt with plagues as before. All right? And this is going to be a slow death. The Most High is going to grind it out, man. All right? It's not going to be a quick death for Egypt. All right? Egypt shall mourn. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn. Yeah, they that till the ground are mourning right now. For their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and fearful constellation. Yeah, they ain't got nobody to work those crops, man. They haven't destroyed thousands and thousands of dollars of crops, man. Which in turn is going to what? Bring on the famine, right? Woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and the destruction draw of now one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands yeah that's what's gonna happen all right this insurrection is gonna happen right this addition all right 
for there shall be sedition among men invading one another and they shall not regard their kings nor their princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power see that so this sedition among men right invading one another this is the next step right it says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able see that and guess what um uh i believe elder Malcolm out of chicago said that he lives right on the border of chicago indiana and he could not go into indiana all right these things are coming to pass right let's go to the book of second Ezra, chapter nine why are these things coming to pass? Because Yahweh Bashar said they were going to happen. Right? Matter of fact. Let's get a quick precept. Let's go to Numbers. Chapter 23. Verse 19. And it reads. The Most High is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said it? And shall he not do it? Have he spoken? And shall he not make it good? You see that? So Yahweh said these things are going to come to pass. Declaring these things from the beginning. Right? Saying all his counsel will stand. Alright? Let's go get that. Isaiah. Chapter 46. Verse 10. Verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am the most high, and there is none else. I am the most high, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times as things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So, you how about sure? So this is all his pleasure. All right, this is how he's stirring up the left hand side so he can put his right hand into work to to liberate and save the the elect of the children of israel all right now let's go to second Ezra, chapter nine all right and we're gonna start at the top this is all prophecy all right this is second Ezra. so like it second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1 he answered me then and said measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest part of the signs pass which I told thee before then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes yeah we didn't see earthquakes over a thousand earthquakes you know, in Puerto Rico, in the span of almost like a week and a half, week and a half right? And as, and as many earthquakes going on now, right? Uproars of the people in the world. Yeah, you have protests now in Berlin, in London, and other places other than America over this so-called um, thing that happened to, what's his name? Um, Slakia. George Floyd, right? Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Yeah, the end is being made known, right? Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs right the endings are in effects and signs to show you that your salvation is drawing near right and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. You see that? Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that cast them away 
despitefully shall dwell in torments, right? Your, your so-called uh, upper echelon in this wicked kingdom, right? Jake and Edomites alike, right? Well, you know, Esau doesn't have a place for repentance at all. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. See that? Therefore be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So yeah, we're not worried about the two thirds, man. All right, we're not worried about how the ungodly is going to be punished. All right, we only seeking for ones that are like minded. All right, let's close it out. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Hey, this is Bible prophecy and it's showing for. Matter of fact, yeah, let's go ahead and go here. All right, this is Matthew. It shot me all the way down at the end of the page. Matthew chapter 24 and I'm going to start at verse 6 and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation what you got going on now you got India and China going back and forth right and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines. That's that famines again, right? And pestilence. Hey, what's that COVID-19? That's a pestilence, man. And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You see that? All these are just the beginning of sorrows. But yeah, by Shara Shai said he's going to save you from the same, right? Matter of fact, let's get this and we'll close it out here. All right? Let's go to Job chapter 5, right? This is Job chapter 5 and verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High corrective. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Almighty. Yeah, correction gets you in order so you won't have to fear the correction later. All right, he chastises you now so you won't have to fear the correction that's going to come to those people who's going to know a death by pain, right? For he make of sore and bind of up. Lock it. For he make of sore and bind of up. He woundeth, and his hands make of whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yeah, and saving shall no evil touch thee. You see that? In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. Yeah, those race wars, that's addition among men, invading one another for the lack of bread, right? Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. You see that? At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. All right? So that's going to be it for the lesson. Lord wisdom been edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakar Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to the brothers laboring worldwide in truth and in sincerity. And a hearty shalom to the believers out there who's believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashim, Shah. To the next time, I say shalom. Lord willing, coming to you with another lesson. Shalom.